Hello. Welcome back. And as always, I hope you're doing well. Right. Like I put out in my post the other day, guys. Sorry I haven't put a video out this week. But the wife has had me digging footings, putting in a concrete base and building a shed. But I'm not going to moan about it. But obviously these things need to be done. So this old fella's aching like a good one. Anyway, today we're going to talk about 10 things about Bruce Lee's Way of the Dragon. Like I've said before in previous videos, people that are experts on Bruce will know a lot of these. But like I've said before, we're getting new Bruce Lee fans coming to the channel. So I like to cover a little bit of everything for them as well. Right, so without further ado, let's do 10 things you may or may not know about the Way of the Dragon. One, Concord Production Inc. The Way of the Dragon was the first movie made by Concord Production Inc, Concord Films, that Bruce Lee and Raymond Chow founded in 1972. Bruce assumed responsibility for the creative decisions, while Raymond Chow managed the administrative aspects and Golden Harvest handled distribution. I know a lot of you know about the Concord Productions, but I really wanted to use a little bit of that indent we didn't see it for many many years until arrow done their release it used to be on some of the old videos you know that concord indent at the beginning i've always loved it i know it's menial but it makes the film more complete as far as i'm concerned now after bruce lee's passing raymond and the lee estate agreed to a flat buyout raymond acquired 51 percent ownership of concord and in 1976 Linda Lee Cadwell sold Bruce's share to Raymond Chow and Concord ceased operation that same year, merging into Golden Harvest. I know Raymond tried to get 51% of 49 while Bruce was still alive and Bruce went nuts over that. He weren't having any of it. Yeah, so 1976, Concord ended. 2. Enter the Dragon While Bruce Lee was working on The Way of the Dragon, the film title was going to be called Enter the Dragon. But when Hollywood approached him with a film deal, he chose to save the title Enter the Dragon for his new venture and subsequently retitled his ongoing project to The Way of the Dragon. So Way of the Dragon was going to be called Enter the Dragon until Hollywood phoned Bruce up and offered him, and as we know, Enter the Dragon was going to be called Blood and Steel. You can actually hear on YouTube Bruce Lee talking to Alex Benblock, who'd done the book, I think it was the legendary Bruce Lee, talking about the title of The Way of the Dragon when it was going to be Enter the Dragon. Now, Enter the Dragon is your new film, and this is you're producing this yourself. Chuck Norris. You know Chuck Norris? I know the name. Well, he is also in it. Uh-huh. He's not it. the location involved. What is the plot of Enter the Dragon? Well, it's, it's really a simple plot of a country boy, you know, going to a place where he cannot speak the language, but somehow he came out on top. Because he, well, because he honestly and simply expressed himself <laughs> by beating the hell out of him. <laughs> All you got to do is Google that, guys, and you will be able to find it here on YouTube. There's numerous videos playing the same recording, but fascinating. Three, Return of the Dragon. In America, The Way of the Dragon was marketed as Return of the Dragon and not The Way of the Dragon. This was to capitalize on the success of Enter the Dragon, 1973, positioning it as a sequel. They done it again. Not only did we have the Chinese connection and Fists of Fury, the Americans changed the title to The Return of the Dragon, which is bonkers, but I kind of get where they was coming from with that one. They wanted a sort of like, on the back of the popularity of Enter the Dragon, wanted it to make it look like a sequel, even though the storyline literally had nothing to do with it. 4. Beauty and the Banker In the film, the Italian beauty who picks up Tang at the Piazza Navona Fountain and subsequently takes him to her residence is portrayed by Melissa Longo. Off screen, she is the spouse of Ricardo Billy who plays the bank manager seen at the beginning of the movie when Nora Mao's character insists and accompanies Bruce to make a deposit in the bank. So the bank manager in real life is married to the Italian beauty. He's done quite well with that one. There are photos you can see in the Colosseum and Round Rome 
Ricardo, Billy and Bruce doing a little bit of looking around and finding places. And there's some great photos of the two of them together. But when you try and look for information on their marriage on the internet, there is nothing. Considering they was both in the way of the dragon, there's very little info about them on the internet. I couldn't even find what year they got married. If any of you guys know, let me know in the comments down below. Five, Bruce's dubs. In the Cantonese and Mandarin versions, Bruce Lee provided the voice for several English speaking characters in the film, including the boss for whom he delivered the line. All right, take him out, but be careful with a gun in public. A lot of us now know that Bruce Lee done the dubbing for the English speaking, which is a bit weird considering it was supposed to be in Italy. But back in the day of VHS, we only got the English dubs. So it was only when we started getting the DVDs and started playing the Cantonese and Mandarin versions, we could actually hear it. But it gives me an excuse to play a little bit of Bruce speaking as the big boss. Six, a cut lip. American singer-songwriter Anders Nilsson played one of the boss's thugs and got the part as a result of knowing Bruce via his brother Robert Lee, who was also a fellow musician. During the back alley double nunchaku battle, as Anders tries to attack Tang from behind with a metal pipe, he accidentally gets cut on the lip by Bruce while wielding the nunchaku. And he still has the scar from that hit today. I mean, that's quite a story. I mean, obviously he's got a scar on his lip from Bruce accidentally hitting him, but there are interviews on YouTube and around the internet where Anders talks about the whole affair. And what a story when you're at a party. Yeah, I've got that scar from Bruce Lee and I've got it on film. Seven, death note. The bullets are faster than anything note that was delivered to Uncle Wang's restaurant asking to hand over Tung Lung to the mob was written in Bruce Lee's handwriting. Unfortunately, I couldn't quite read the bottom of it. Bruce Lee's handwriting is easily recognisable. Bob Baker letters, although not all of them. Some of them were all over the place. But I picked that one up from Bay Logan, listening to two different audio commentaries by Bay on The Way of the Dragon. Both of them are on YouTube, although one was a little bit on the quiet side. Eight, Bob or Fred? When Colt accompanies the boss into the boss's office, he introduces his student, Bob Wall, as Bob. Bob's my student. But in the credits, Bob Wall's character is called Fred. You can clearly hear Chuck calling him Bob, but his name is certainly Fred on the credits. So maybe someone overlooked that. There's another problem with the credits, but I'll talk about that later on. Nine, thumbs down. As Tung caught sight of Colt for the first time in the Colosseum, he was initially outlined by one of the Colosseum's brick windows or arches. However, in the very next instant, Colt was depicted against a clear sky devoid of any surrounding brickwork as he gestured a thumbs down to Tung Lung. Yeah, a little bit of a continuity error there. I mean, obviously as it zooms in on Chuck, he stood up in one of the windows but from the outside they look like arches so i didn't exactly know what to call them but then when he's giving it the thumbs down he seems to be in a massive open space i always knew there was something quite odd there but i could never put my finger on it it's quite obvious now when you look at it 10 the black belt after the fight with colt tang picks up colt's gi jacket and black belt and the belt is hanging loosely but when he turns the corner, the belt is folded neatly before he places it on Colt's body. Another continuity error. Again, it, it's, it really is nitpicking, but not everyone notices it. Right, so there's your 10 things you may or may not have known about the way of the dragon. Now, there are a couple of other things that I wanted to mention. Also, you'll notice as Bruce, after the Nunchaku battle, expels them all, the boss and his goons, out of the restaurant. And then you've got some patrons coming in. Well, the first bloke that walks in there is Jim James, the actor. Well, fast forward a few years and you'll notice Jim James, a little bit greyer, as the doctor to Billy Lowe in Game of Death. 
And also in the credits, I said I was going to bring something up about the credits. It has Bruce Lee as the martial arts choreographer. And then his friend Unicorn Chan, it should say Unicorn, but it says Unicon. Oops. <coughs> now there are photos of Bruce Lee and Tony Lau doing auditions for The Way of the Dragon. And they're on the actual set of Fist of Fury. Uh, it's at the Jing Wu School, and they're on the upstairs bit, the upstairs landing. You don't get to see that set very often in the film. And this photos with Bruce and Raymond Chow. And Bruce and Tony Lau are doing auditions for Margareth Mayo. Fong Yang. And Irene Ryder. Although the role eventually went to the beautiful Nora Meow. And I'm glad she got the role because I think out of all the films, she had a bit part in Big Boss. A bigger part, she was Bruce Lee's sort of lover, girlfriend in Fist of Fury. Not sure about the haircut, never have been, but... But in Way of the Dragon, she looked absolutely gorgeous and she was a brilliant co-star in the film. Hang on. Talking about Irene Ryder, Irene Ryder starred in another Kung Fu film in 1972 with Yasuaki Kurata called Kung Fu the Invisible Fist. There are also photos of Bruce with Yasuaki at the Kai Tak Airport from 1972. Incidentally, Kung Fu the Invisible Fist also stars Chi Yun who was one of the three fighters, along with James Chen and Bruce, climbing the pagoda in 1972's Game of Death. I thought that was quite an interesting bit of trivia. And I did hear that Betty Ting Pei, you know, Betty, um, Bruce actually passed away in her apartment, was also in the runnings. You can clearly see her on the set of the film, but I'm glad it went to Nora. Now, before I sort of like round this video up, guys, I would need to ask you, right at the end when Tung Lung has defeated Colt and he's walking away and putting his jacket on, there's a bit of graffiti on the wall. Does anyone know what it says? Because I can't make it out. And it was a set, so it was purposely written on there, but I have no idea what it says. And it's always bothered me. And every time I watch Way of the Dragon, I always notice it. Do any of you guys know what that is? Now for me, Rome is the only place I've ever been to that is Bruce Lee related. I sat on the same bench as Bruce in the same spot at the Piazza Navona Fountains. And of course, I went to the Colosseum and tried to find places where Bruce had stood. Now, did you know all this trivia? Let me know down below. Do any of you guys know any other Way of the Dragon trivia that I didn't mention? And do any of my American subscribers still call the Way of the Dragon the Return of the Dragon? It's going to be a hard one to break after all these years, I guess. Right. <coughs> With that, I'm going to love you and leave you. If you like this sort of thing, maybe give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything and it really does help me out. Thank you all for the comments, the likes, and the new subscribers. It absolutely means the world. And as always, my patrons. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much for your continued support. All right, have yourselves an amazing week, guys. Much love. And I'll be back with another ramble real soon. You take care now.